Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. We'll be going over one of our favorite products uh, here at Concordia Technology Solutions, uh, Lutheran Service Builder. We're going to talk about all the ways that we can save you time by using this incredible product. So for those who don't know, my name is Rob Davidson. I'm the marketing manager of digital products here at Concordia. I recently started and replaced Peter Frank. If you know him, he's out in Vicarage right now. And so I'm taking over all his responsibilities and just absolutely falling in love with all of our incredible products here. And who will be taking over and leading this presentation is Ken Olmeyer. He's the Senior Marketing Manager for Concordia Publishing House. And you'll see his contact information here. Feel free to contact him, I, our support or software consultants, uh, whose contact you'll see later down the line. If you have any uh, questions uh, throughout, uh, oh, I guess you haven't seen my screen. I am so sorry. All right, so come back. And show screen. There we go. All right. So <laughs> again, my name is Rob Davidson. That's my picture there. And then this is Ken Olmeyer. Uh, and if you have any questions throughout this process, us software consultants, uh, we'd be happy to answer any of your questions uh, and feedback because we're always making this uh, product better. And our entire goal is to make it uh, the best possible tool for all of your ministries. A little bit of housekeeping today. Uh, we're probably going to have around 50 minutes for this presentation to go through everything that Ken's going to talk about. Then we'll have 10 minutes for questions. Uh, and feel free to ask questions throughout, either through the chat or through the question feature in the webinar program. Uh, the recording will be shared. All of you that uh, have registered will be sent the recording as soon as it's uploaded. So for all of you that don't know, Lutheran Service Builder is a web-based program that allows churches to quickly and easily plan services, create custom bulletin interiors, export presentations and playlists, and conform with copyright requirements. Uh, you know, we like to uh, make a couple assumptions when we give these presentations of who we're talking to. Uh, the first one being that you're new to Lutheran Service Builder. This is an overview webinar. And so for the most part, you, we assume that uh, you haven't been spending too much time so we, we have other webinar resources that are more training focused, some coming out this September, that will go into the, the nitty gritty details of everything that is LSB. This webinar is more oriented to people who aren't as familiar, aren't diving into the same extent, and are really curious with, uh, moreover, the benefits that this can save, how this can save them time, what all can they do with it, and how it's going to amplify their ministry and make things easier on them and other office staff. We're also going to assume that you understand the basics of liturgy. We, uh, everyone here should, uh, is probably in the LCMS and in a church office role. So understanding how the, ser the divine service is put together, uh, and that which the Lutheran Service Builder Program serves, is, is something that you should be well versed in in order to understand uh, what all Lutheran Service Builder can do for you. Uh, we also know that uh, you've had at least some kind of uh, informal or formal training in how to use uh, or go through the, that liturgy. And we're also assuming that you're very busy. And that is the main, one of the main benefits of Lutheran Service Builder is just how much time this will save you uh, in planning your worship service. We've, uh, and I'm sure Ken will uh, explain more about this and how this will happen, but we've recently done uh, interviews with uh, a number of congregations and pastors and sitting down with them, taking them out to lunch, and one of the, uh, the responses we got from this uh, software is that it's saving them anywhere from 
two to three hours of planning per service, which is just when you take that over the course of the year, Sunday, Saturday service, and then Advent and Lenten services, it's just absolutely incredible. Funeral services, marriages, etc. how much time this will save you. So going over a quick outline of what we'll cover today, we'll go through on how to plan a service, a general overview of other aspects of LSB, uh, and how to add unique worship elements. So let's go ahead and get started. Ken, I'm gonna be passing things over to you. Thank you, Rob. I'm gonna look for the switch right there. And I see a couple of pastors on here that I recognize. So good to see you again, Pastor Went. Uh, there you go. So I'm gonna show this, get into my screen here. Let's see what everybody's seeing. Up oh, there you go. Okay, so as Rob said, thanks uh, thanks for being with us today. My name is Ken Olemeyer. Uh, I am one of the senior marketing managers here at Concordia Publishing House, and we're very excited to bring this one to you. This is this is of all the demos that I get a chance to do. This is one of my favorites uh, because it really is one of those type of things that can be in record time. You can start planning your worship services in record time and actually freeing yourself up for other ministries as well. Um, as we said, we imagine everybody who is watching today's webinar has some experience in planning worship ceremonies and worship services. So we'll just take a look at uh, what, how, how to do this and do it most effectively for you. But let, let me just start with a story here. Yeah, I, I've grown up Lutheran all my life. And it, even with a heavily involved church family, and uh, myself being an elder at my church and just always being somewhat involved in church. It really wasn't until I got here at CPH that I realized just how long it takes to plan a worship service. And as Rob said, you know, one of the things I do is I get a chance to get out and talk with pastors. I get a chance to talk with music directors, church administrators, things like that. And just while I've got everybody here on this webinar today, I just want to say thank you for all that you do to get a worship service together. It really is a lot of work. And as a lay person, uh, I do appreciate that very much. Now, the team that we have at CTS, at Concordia Technology Solutions, has been living with this software for years. Uh, it's not something that I use every day. And, and quite frankly, as Rob said, he's relatively new to it too. But that is really one of the true reasons why I love doing this demo, uh, because I wanna show you just how, how quick it is to be able to do this. And I love showing the online version as well of Lutheran Service Builder Online. Uh, I, I think that if there was anything that we learned through COVID, it was that sometimes you just need to be able to pivot and you're not always gonna be sitting at your desk. Uh, so being able to plan your worship services online from anywhere, uh, whether it's your home office, whether it's your back deck, maybe it's the coffee house uh, down the road, uh, but anywhere you want to be able to jump on your computer and plan your service, uh, this is a great way to do it. And because it's online, it works for a PC or a Mac. So one of the things we do is we listen very closely to our customer base and our pastors and our music teachers and things like that. So our music director. So if you have ideas or if you have uh, suggestions for how to improve this, let us know. And we've taken a lot of those ideas uh, lately and have made a number of different improvements that we're real excited to show to you. So real quick, what can Lutheran Service Builder do for you? Well, if you're like me, I love our liturgy. I love the hymnody. Uh, I love the scripture. I love the order, the divine worship services and things like that. And with Lutheran Service Builder Online, you can simplify how long it takes you to get your worship service together. And you can spend your extra time then focused on other ministries that you uh, are responsible for. And uh, we keep talking about how much time you can save. And are, are we overhyping this? We really aren't. As Rob mentioned, when he first came on board, I took him out and we talked to a number of pastors and, and church administrators and we got to talking with them and just, we'd say, you know, flat out, how much time is this saving you? And Rob said two to three hours. It, it could be anywhere of two to four hours, we even heard. So think about that in the course of a month, getting an extra four hours a week 
in the course of a month and what that can do for you as you're working on other ministries. So today I'm just gonna give you a quick 30,000 foot overview. Uh, we're gonna, not gonna be probably able to cover everything in our time today. Uh, we'll probably not even take the full time because this can go by so quickly that I don't wanna belabor certain things, but we'll get into the meat of things. But we're gonna cover a lot of ground. But the recommendation I would have for you as you're watching this is to go online and sign up for the free demo. And the free demo allows you to, to start using the software and, and get a sense of it. Uh, there's no credit card, no obligation or anything like that, but it does give you a chance to really get into it and start seeing how easy it is. And once you sign up, you'll just see how quick you can be running uh, your services and how quickly you can be getting done with for planning your services. Now, there's a couple caveats with the free demo. You can't export, you can't print, you can't copy and paste, but the free demo gives you all the other resources you can. And what's great about it too, I'm sitting here looking for my phone, is that this is mobile responsive too. Uh, I know many pastors that I talk to will put Lutheran Service Builder online onto their phone because it's web-based and they'll use it uh, for hospital visits, for calls, um, I'll show some other ways that you can incorporate music into this and MIDI files and things like that. But I, I've known pastors that have taken into hospitals and been able to provide part of the uh, worship service with the uh, inbound member that they were talking to. And it's just a great resource to be able to do this. So the other thing too, and uh, because it is web-based, it's the same price point for you. Uh, there's no upcharge or anything like that, and you're no longer required to stay on your desk. So let's get started. And first thing I want to do is show the opening screen, and you should be seeing that on your computer. If you aren't seeing it, please type in and say, I can't see your screen, uh, so that Rob can alert me and we can know about that. But the first thing you see uh, is the opening here, and you see the, the address is applutheranservicebuilder.com. Uh, and that's when you sign up for your for your trial or when you sign up for your service. This is what you'll see. And one of the things too, it, it's it's hard to believe as I open up the calendar and you see August, it's hard to believe that summer is just about gone. And that means pretty soon we're gonna be planning Advent and Christmas services. And if the simple thought of all of that isn't stressful enough, you or somebody at your church is gonna have a lot of services to start planning. So now is a great time to take a look at LSB online and really start to see if this might be something that can help you as you start getting into the busy season of Advent and Christmas. So let's just kind of do a quick navigation. You see here at the top, uh, the, the cross symbol, that is your starting point. This will take you back to wherever you uh, have been on other screens or things like that. If you just click on that, it'll take you back. The calendar view is your main view. This is what you will always open up to. And it's interesting because we can go backwards in our calendar uh, just by clicking the arrow to the left. We can go forward on our calendar by clicking the arrow on the right. So one of the things that's great about Lutheran Service Builder Online is you can start planning services months in advance and then always come back to them and tweak them as you get closer to the service time. Uh, let's see, under here you have a uh, search, a uh, little search window that you can use and, and use for searching things. You see a few different things. I can just start typing in um, an idea of uh, Holy Night, an idea of a, a hymn. Let's see if I, okay, so I just put, even just putting in just a quick letter. You can see different types of baptism of our Lord, beginning of service, close of the day. I just have an O in there. Uh, you can see that I can search for hymns and tunes, cross of Jesus, gift of heaven, grace of God, different liturgies that are available to me, and even looking at authors and things of that nature. Uh, to get, ever get out of this area so that you're not trapped in it, there's a little X on the right side. Just click on that and it'll take you back to where you want to go. Also, the gear right there under settings. Under settings, you see a couple of different things here. You see the calendar. Uh, you see the search that I just showed right there as well. And you see my worship resources. So you are able to do things like save my prayers, my hymns, my common elements, my liturgies, my copyright holders. 
And copyright is a great feature of LSB Online so that you can bring in other copyright uh, information and have that right there on your uh, right there on your service bulletin. Uh, also your psalm tones, your templates, your tunes, things of that nature. You can import from an LSBX file and then bulletin formats and presentation formats will come back to those. Your account settings, uh, those are just pretty much standard, you know, where your locations are, users, you can have uh, different people you can invite onto this as well. Um, then your preferences and, and the sign out. But I want to, while we're here, point out two different things. One is bulletin formats and presentation formats. If you click into bulletin formats, that opens up where you can format all of your different bulletins as well. And I have you know, your default format right here. And for many of you who may be uh, either hand typing these or you use maybe the old LSB, the disk version, things like that, you'll be familiar with some of this, but it's just basically a word formatting. So you can see over here your style, uh, where you can do your body sections, your headings, your captions, your sub captions, the rubric, copyright, et cetera. Your layout, you can do eight and a half by 11, you can do legal, you can do ledger, you can even do custom sizes of paper. And then the content itself, uh, you can make all headings visible or you can take them off. You can do all the rubrics as visible, uh, hymns. And I'll show as we go through this, actually, when we're formatting, you can also do some formatting when we are preparing the bulletin itself. But this allows you to go in and make some tweaks, uh, do some different things that allow you to provide different styles. Uh, the default is this, but you can also go into creative worship and have uh, all of this. You can change the fonts, you can change the type size, the paragraph. What I love about LSB Online too, and this is, this is so much easier uh, than having to retype this or anything else, but you can immediately go to a large print bulletin. And I know I'm, my glasses keep getting harder and harder, uh, a bigger uh, prescription. I know that many of us have people in our congregation that need that extra large type to be able to see things. Uh, and then I have what I call here demo formatting, which just shows you know, some different types of fonts and different types of things that you can do. And then a one and all rejoice font or format as well. So these are all different formats that, and I'm just gonna go back to my default, but these are all different formats that you can go in and customize. And I'll show that when we do a bulletin, and we download it as a Word document, you can still go back in and do some further customization if that uh, suits you better. Again, I'm gonna go out to the X, but I just wanna show a couple different things too, that when you do make these changes, there's a reset button or a save button. So you wanna be sure that you're saving your changes. Um, so let me click out of that. So let's just start planning a worship service. Let's just go right into it right now. Two things though first, before I do that. Uh, you notice the calendar view, and I showed you how we can move forward and backwards on here, but here's something else too that is fantastic. You notice in this upper right-hand corner, there's a drop-down menu. And what that allows me to do is put in maybe a different campus. Maybe you have uh, a South campus or a North campus, or maybe you want to develop certain uh, services for your chapel, for your school chapel. Uh, or whatever, or maybe you have a main campus or you have dual parishes, uh, you can add different calendars and different worship services based on that. And that is done through the gear setting and uh, into some of your account settings as well. But I love having that, that flexibility of having two different parishes or two different campuses listed. So when you open up the calendar, it comes pre-populated with all of the Sunday and the church year calendars, or pardon me, the holidays, the church year holidays. And each of those have the appropriate readings according to Lutheran service book, altar book. Uh, so if you click on any of these, you can go right into them. So a couple of things too, you notice uh, these are bold and they have a, a different little icon next to them. Hopefully you can see that on my screen or when you do the demo, you can look at that as well. But that means I've already started editing into those. Uh, there's Pentecost 11, Pentecost 12. I haven't even touched those. So if I were to click into those, uh, this opens up and it shows all the properties. It shows the 
re recommended readings, and this is for August 21st, the 11th Sunday after uh, Pentecost, and it's proper 16. Uh, but it shows the recommended readings. It shows the psalm, the epistles that you can use, and gives you an option on a couple of those. The gospel readings for that Sunday, uh, the intro it, and the collect of the day, the gradual, the verse, and then hymn of the day. And I'll show you how we add all these type of things in. But what's great about that, I'm gonna go back to my cross right there, but what's great about that is if you were to go back in time, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go back to where I was doing some previous services. So when you go back, you can take a look at any Sunday and see the readings. Uh, so if there was something you wanted to make sure that if did we cover that last month or cover that last year during a service, you can go back and see the readings. Now you're not able to go back in and revise or do anything uh, additional to the services, but it's kind of nice. Like here's one where I actually, the fourth Sunday in Easter, where I had started to prepare the bulletin and I can go in here and it just, it shows the bulletin and what I was doing that particular Sunday. So that's kind of nice because it does give you the opportunity to go back in time and take a look at maybe what some of the hymns you were singing uh, during that time, or if there was a special service or a funeral or things of that nature. Let me click back out of here. So I'm gonna go back to this month. And let's just start creating a custom service. I'll, sh I'll show you right here a service that I've already started editing. And you see that I've got my readings, I've added hymns, uh, my order of service, uh, additional rites. But let's go into Pentecost 11. And I'm going to do this two ways. Uh, I'm just going to go to the date. So that's uh, the 21st. You see all my propers come up. Or I can go right into, uh, say, on the, the left side of this, I can go right into it from another date. Uh, so September, uh, Pentecost 13 in September. Pentecost 14, it takes me straight to that as well. So there's two different ways to do it. Again, it's gonna be your preference. It's gonna be however you're used to going into it once you start uh, practicing and start getting your bulletins together this way. But let's go back to Pre Pentecost 11 and I'll show you how to start preparing uh, the worship service itself. So you see, again, the propers are there and then you see this bar at the top, this button, plan this service. All I do is I click into that. And now it gives me the propers for Pentecost 11, but it also allows me to start building my service plan. And this is where it just it just starts going so quick. And I love this. So it has my readings, but I have the option to add additional readings. So perhaps there's additional reading there, or it has different suggested readings, uh, you know, suggestions for Mary, suggestions for Bartholomew, suggestions for proper 17. So it gives you that, or you can always search for an additional reading as well. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, for the sake of today's demo, I'm just gonna keep the four readings that are there. But now hymns, this is where I wanna start adding the hymnody. And when I click in to add hymn, you see the whole right side of my screen starts populating with a number of different hymns. And I have some different ads in here, or add-ons in here. My creative worship is in here, uh, creative worship there, the creative worship as well. I've got my suggested hymns for proper uh, 16, my hymn of the day, uh, hymns for the readings. You see various hymns come up, suggested hymns. And I'm gonna click in here and add my hymn of the day. All I do is I click on it, it adds it to my left side. So you see it added right there. I wanna add an, an additional hymn. I click on add hymn. Again, all these other hymns pop up. And I love this little feature. It's something that you don't really think about until you start developing these uh, a number of worship service bulletins and you start seeing, well, wait, I used this one two weeks ago or I used this one three years ago. So it gives you a little designation there on the right side of when you last used that hymn. I'm gonna use Lift High the Cross. That's one of my favorites. I'm gonna add, oh, hymns for the reading. How about uh, do, do, do. Saints See the Cloud of Witness? I added that. I'm gonna add one more hymn here. But you see just how quick and easy it is to add the hymns and you have so many different choices. Uh, again, what's great about this because you can add people into this. I, I've talked to pastors who they'll work on the worship side of it and then have their music director 
add the hymns and the hymnody into it, and then they can compare and, and take a look at that as well. Again, it all depends on how you're set up in your administrative staff and your office staff. If you're a pastor and you're developing the entire service yourself, it's here for you. If you're a pastor and you're trying to do different types of things with your, with your worship team, they can have input as well. Isaiah, mighty seer of old, that's a great one. Now, take a look at the order of the service. And right here it says empty. I click onto it and that gives me my divine services. It gives me my creative worship on here. I can do daily offices. Uh, I can do other types of services. And I'll show why that's beneficial in just a minute here. But let's just go in here and just say divine service setting three. So I'm gonna do that right there. Then I have the opportunity to go in and add additional rights. So if I wanted to add a right, I could do that. And it shows these different rights that are available to me, uh, whether they're seasonal rights or baptism, or maybe I, I'm doing a baptism during my service, uh, or I'm doing you know, corporate confession and absolution. I'm doing holy matrimony. I probably wouldn't do that on a Sunday service, but you know, it's all there for you. And that's what's great. It's all right at your fingertips. And all you're doing is clicking onto it to add it. And then you can also go in here and manually add some notes to your service plan as well. You can go down to the bottom, you can change the name, the date, the holiday itself. You can make a copy of this service if it's something that you're going to be making uh, and using uh, variations on, um, that makes it very easy. Or if you decided after you put it all together, uh, I just, I wanna start fresh, you can delete the service. So right here, in just a matter of minutes, I've been able to add my readings, which are already pre-populated. I was able to add a number of hymns, which I was able to select. And then I decided on what order of service I wanted to use. Uh, and then all I do is I go over here to the far right side and you see prepare bulletin, prepare presentation or prepare playlist. And we will do all of those uh, in the course of this demo. So I just hit prepare uh, the bulletin. And there it is, it opens up. And it opens up in the format that I had used, which was my default bulletin format. Let me just show you a couple different things here in the navigation. Export, we'll do that when we get ready to finish this up. Uh, my default is all the different worship bulletin styles again, as I showed you in the earlier part. But let's say I want to switch it over to creative worship, or maybe I just need to get that large print. It's right there. All of these are right here for you as well. And then I'm just gonna do default. I can go in here and edit that as well, where I, it takes me right back to that editing page that we were in. I'm gonna click off of that. And it should take me right back to here. One thing I just, I wanna bring up too while I've got you here. You notice down at the right hand corner of this page, and uh, hopefully I can grab it on, on you see it on, my, uh, on the screen there. But there's a little circle I. And I love the circle I. We have this in all of the Church 360 suite. We have this on LSB Online. What this is, this is your lifeline. When you have a question, when you're trying to figure something out and you just need that little bit of information or you need that extra thing to get you moving, just click on that and it pulls up uh, suggested articles or you can go in and search. So let me just say, let's say change format. And let me hit enter and see if that, see, and then you see bulletin format overview, creating a bulletin format, my templates. So it gives you a chance to then go to our online help center, or you can visit our online help center. You can also have a couple different options here. You can start a chat and one of our support team will be online to chat with you, or you can send us a message. And this is a great type of thing too. Again, usually it's one of these type of things when you're working on your bulletin, it might be late at night, it might be early in the morning, it's whenever it's most convenient for you. You can still access and ask questions and have our support team help you with this. The support team, by the way, is here uh, in St. Louis. Uh, so you're gonna be dealing with people that are familiar with what goes on in a church service. They are able to understand you and understand your needs. Uh, again, CTS is, is made up of church people who develop this for other church people. So that's one of the big advantages of using LSB online. But anyway, type in there a subject matter, give us as much information as you need so that we can help answer your question promptly the first time. You have different priority levels that you can use to send it. 
And you're also always welcome to give us a call, normally during normal business hours, but 800-346-6120. Okay, I just wanted to show that to you because I think that again is one of those just little things that I don't wanna just gloss over it because it's one of those that can help you throughout the time that you're uh, putting this worship bulletin together. So I have my worship bulletin, I have my divine service setting three. If I change my mind, I can go back in and change that as well. But I also then can see these different pieces and I can click into here and I can even change some ideas within it. You see the little blue box around it. Uh, but take a look at this, this is great too. When you are developing your service, you'll, cert you'll see certain sections that have this blue bar with an arrow on it. If you click that arrow down, it gives you an alternative. So again, you can develop this to the way that you want to have your worship bulletin uh, completed. So you can either use the, the first one, I have poor miserable sinner, confess, or you can do this one, uh, oh, mer most merciful God uh, who has given your only begotten son to die. Uh, so I can decide on which one of those. And all, all it is is clicking down on it, clicking into the box, and then that is what populates. Then you start seeing this go on again. Here's my intro it. I can either go into the Psalm or I can just use the intro it. I'm just gonna do that. Um, this is great too. And uh, just little features. Uh, and I, I won't go too deep into some of this, but you know, I can do the, the pointing. Uh, sometimes you can put in notes of the Psalm notes. Let's say I wanna add my Psalm note into that as well. If you're chanting or if your congregation is replying, um, via that, they can, you can do that. So I love that type of feature. Uh, the Curie, Glory and Excelsis, Salutation. Here's my Old Testament reading. It shows the uh, where it is, Isaiah. And I can go in here and I can make uh, changes to that as well. Again, the Psalm, the Epistle, and I'm just kind of going down through here fairly quickly because there's a couple things I want to show you as well. Uh, the Alleluia, let's see what the choice there is. So I have a couple different Alleluias here. Uh, and this is great too, sometimes there'll be prompts. So you see track, and track is usually omitted during the Pentecost season. So again, just little clues like that. Uh, I will show you in another area where I separated a song. Uh, I did the first four verses in one section, and then I followed up after the sermon with the following three verses. Uh, when I first put that song in, it told me that that song was already placed within the bulletin. So I was able to be reminded of that and I decided, okay, I wanna just have these final three verses and it was fine. So I'll see if I can show you that if we have time. But little little prompts like that are just so convenient. Uh, there's Nicene Creed here, or I can choose the Apostles' Creed. I'm gonna do that. Um, and then the hymn of the day. And this is what I wanted to show you. So I had my service plan hymns in here. So I'm gonna pop in Lift High the Cross. And what I love about this is when I sing, I have to see the notes. Uh, it's just, it's one of those type of things. I love just reading the text, but if I can see the notes, that helps me a lot as a lay person trying to sing along. So I can click in here and I can add the melody lines as well. Uh, there's also melody in Spanish, which that doesn't have it, but uh, if I clicked into it, it would. And then I can also, I mentioned, I can decide on what stanzas I want. Um, you know, so yeah, this is interesting. So, okay, there you go. So here's the melody in Spanish. I can, so I can add Spanish uh, information in here. And, and I tell you, there, there are little advances that even the last time I did this demo, I don't think that was part of it. So that's good to see. But anyway, I can go in here and I can decide uh, which stanzas, which verses I want to do. And I have that flexibility right here as I'm planning my worship bulletin and planning my service. So I'm just gonna keep all those on here for the time being. Then I can go in here to the sermon. I can edit the sub caption. Uh, you see, I can go in here and uh, I'm gonna type in here, oh, uh, sermon, let's just lift high the cross. Since I have used that as one of my hymns. But I can go in there, I can add some different information in there as well. Again, it's, it's very simple and it's tailorable to what your worship needs are when you're developing your worship bulletin. Offering prayers of the church. Again, I can go in here and you know, we can change some of those prayers out if we want. 
uh, service of the sacrament. I've, I'm having communion in this service. So I've got all of that there. Uh, I can go in and uh, maybe I'm not doing this as a melody. Maybe I'm just doing this as text. So I'm doing that, the words of our Lord, just as text. I can make that change very quickly. I can keep the distribution in there uh, or I can take that out. If I take it out, let's see if I just delete it. And again, it's just, you know, I'm just taking those sections out uh, or I could add those, but I can then add in my distribution hymns, clicking into there. So saints see the cloud of witness. Again, I can either do it with the music notes or without the music notes. I'm gonna put the melody in. It's just one of those things that I like. I'm partial to that. Uh, Isaiah Mighty Seer, Days of Old. I have my communion hymns in here now, and then the rest of the service. So, you know, I, I go through that very quickly, but that's just how fast it is uh, to be able to do your worship bulletin. And then if I go in here and I can insert sections, so let's say I wanted to insert, oh, uh, let's see if I'm inserting something here. I can insert an element, I can insert a rite, I can have an additional prayer in here, I can put in another reading, uh, maybe another hymn, uh, caption or heading. Let's just say I wanna insert another hymn right here, gives me that, I click over, I'm populated on the right side. I meant to include a multiple that comes from the east. So I'm gonna insert that. And there I go, then it's added. And then you see down the very bottom, uh, all of your acknowledgements, all your copyright, all the information you need is right there for you as well. So then I go to this side right here, uh, back to document and I export. And when I have the chance to export, I'm doing it in three different ways. Uh, exporting as a document, a Word document, uh, a rich text format, which is very handy as well, or an HTML. So if I just click on this as a Word document, you see that's going to export and it's opening up down there at the bottom of my screen. I'm gonna click on it. It's opening up on my other monitor, grab that. Oop. Grab that right there, enable editing. And then I can go in and make even further edits if there's something I need to do uh, for spacing or anything of that nature. Maybe we have some additional information at the top we wanna add. Uh, I can do that and I can do that manually or just do it that way. But then I can save that as a Word document or I can save it as a PDF, export it as a PDF or something else. Something I really wanna show you, and I, I love this. Up here, you also have web view. And, and it says here, enable web view. So I'm clicking into that and it's giving me a link. So I'm gonna copy that link and I'm just gonna add another tab here. And I'm gonna go here and it's going to show me an HTML link. And what's great on this is I've heard a couple different things and I'm actually gonna show you a, a real example of this. But what's great on this is, let's say you're doing this with a worship team and you want to have somebody to review a certain part of your worship bulletin or your worship service. You can send them this web link and they can access the web link. Or, and this is, I think, the, the neatest um, use of this that I've seen. And if you're already doing something like this, please let us know. I love seeing this type of stuff. We were recently at Holy Cross in Vandalia, Illinois. And on their website, they actually include the, the service uh, that is their HTML link. And I just thought that that was so great because many of us now are doing our services online. And really, frankly, one of the great benefits of LSB online was during the pandemic when we were offering it for free for a period of time to help the congregations make that transition onto a live stream or you know being able to have remote access for their for their congregants. This is a great way to put your bulletin online for your members who are either looking on uh, at a live stream or they're you know, maybe even on their phones during the service and this is how they're getting their bulletins. I, I, it's just, I was so impressed with this when I first saw it and uh, I just wanted to share that with you because that HTML is definitely something that can be done. So keep that in mind as you're taking a look as well. All right, so I inserted some types of things. I'm trying to look at my time here, make sure I'm covering everything. Uh, I've inserted, I've inserted. 
I've reviewed and I've saved. I can also save my bulletin as uh, a custom order of service. So let's say I wanted to give it a special name or something like that. I can save that as well. Uh, I have my that, I've got that. Okay, I'm just making sure that I've covered everything on here. So it's very easy to export and it's very easy to get that into another format that you can edit in a different way. Now, one of the things also, uh, churches will do a couple different things here. You Maybe you do this, maybe you have screens in your church and you want to do a presentation of your service and the hymns and the readings and things of this nature. Now, I'm going to show you this, prepare presentation. It is this worship service that I'm going to be able to do. It's going to go in here and it's going to go to prepare presentation. Now, I didn't really get too much into the formatting of the presentation, but you can export this in two different ways, either as a Microsoft PowerPoint uh, presentation or a Media Shout 6 presentation. And I didn't go into the editing of, of the PowerPoint, but it's the same type of thing. And I'll just show you, it, this is really one of these where it's it's a good head start for you. You might need to tweak some of the, the editing uh, as you go along to actually fit your congregation, fit the content and things of this nature. But uh, I've got in here just, you know, it, it just shows you quickly uh, how this would look if you didn't do any other formatting to it at all. Now, I've gone in as well and made a couple different changes. Like here's one we call iron, which is just showing the, the icons and the imagery on the right side. You can go in, you can change the color to this. You can do uh, whatever works best for you on there. I also just have a couple quick demos formatting right here where I put a picture in the background. Again, these are just things that I've, I've done for this demo. Uh, you would want to make sure that you spend some time with the program and with the software to be sure that it is uh, formatted in the best light of how your projector works, how your screens are, things of that nature. But it does give you the option to do a lot of those type of things. Again, it, my intro it with my verses up here. One of the things that you know we know uh, we hear at times is being able to do the hymns. Uh, and again, you can do this either just the words, you can do this with the melody as well. So if I take the melody out, oh, let me just do the text. And you can see I can I can even make that change while I'm in here uh, doing my presentation. Not going to spend too much time on this, but it's the same format where I can then export it, I can save it, do different things here too. The other one too is preparing a playlist and I'm coming up on time. So I wanna make sure I get a couple of these things done. So you can add music uh, to your bulletins as well. Uh, obviously not to the printed bulletin, but you can add music to your presentation and other things. And, and I frequently will tell this story. I was one time visiting a pastor up in Iowa and it was a rural church and he was telling me the story. He was very, very savvy with the way he did his his uh, screened uh, bulletin. You know, he had a clicker and he was able to move the service along just by himself, but he did not have an organist. So he used the Concordia organist uh, part of this opportunity with LSB and added the hymns in there. And you probably cannot hear, probably because, let's see. I'm going to crank that up. Hopefully you can hear that. But you can add the hymns to your to your files. Uh, again, this is an adder onto it. But if you don't have an organist like he didn't, uh, he was able to bring these into the slides. And then the funny part was, as the service was ending, he told me, uh, somebody came up to him who was a visitor and said, boy, your organist was fantastic. So these are, these are just one of those type of things that you can add into the service uh, and sometimes find out, you know, that, you, you know, if your organist is sick that day or whatever, you still have that organ and that music that you can add. And all you do on here when you're doing this, you just say include, you go to the hallelujah, you say include, my intro it, all stanzas include, Kyrie include, on and on and on. I would just I would just go through my list on the right and include whatever songs or hymns that I'm using and then export it. 
and it exports it as a zipped uh, MP3 playlist file. So you'll be able to bring those into your presentation or even sometimes be able to use that if you're uh, visiting uh, or, or doing a ministry service somewhere else, you would have that option. Now, again, that's something to add into it, the Concordia organist. Uh, you know, our software specialists can help you with that as well. But really, that is it. That's it. That's how quick it is and easy it is to develop your service. Let me do one thing while, while I've got you here. Let's say we're having a wedding. All I do is I click on the date. You see the date, August 12th. It's a holiday. Well, no, no holiday. Uh, but let's say a wedding. Plan this service. So now I'm here. I can add my, my readings. Uh, and it gives me suggestions for, for different propers or suggestions otherwise. I can add my hymns very much the same way we did before. So if there are specific hymns that are going to be part of this wedding or funeral, same type of thing. And then my order of service is empty. But let's say I'm doing a, a I don't know, a, but let's do, instead of a wedding, let's make this a funeral. Unless I find wedding here. Oh, no, here it is. Holy matrimony. Let's do a holy matrimony right there additional rights, I go prepare bulletin. And well, it's empty because I don't have an order of service. So let's do the order of service, uh, divine three again. So here it is. And then I would get into my matrimony and my wedding information, same with a funeral, things of that nature. I'm clicking back to my cross. It takes me back to my uh, calendar and you see on here the wedding. And I could go in and rename it with the people's names and things like that, or if it were funeral or confirmation service, or a chapel service. I know a lot of pastors who will use LSB online to work up their chapel services for their schools. And I just, I think that's such a, a neat way to use this. So what this allows you to do is do a properly designed, uh, no pun intended with proper, but properly designed, uh, easy to develop and simple service builder or service bulletin in just a few minutes. And again, as we said, we're not overhyping this when it can save you two to four hours a week on type of thing. So it, it frees you up to do even more ministry. And the services are something you're going to be working on all the time. So you know these are coming up so you can start planning ahead. You can start laying out your Advent and Christmas worship services right now and then get closer. You can then uh, you know, make the final tweaks as you go along. But put it to the test. Sign up for that demo and see how long it's going to take you to do some of those. So Rob mentioned the CTS Academy. We're going to have those coming up, and those are going to be very exciting because those are going to be little nuggets of information, unlike an hour-long presentation or a 50-minute long presentation. But it's going to be those little nuggets that are going to tell you specific types of things that you can do, and I can go deeper into them. Uh, be looking for those announcements as they come up. And again, I just want to say thank you for attending today. Uh, I know this is a busy time, even in the summer with vacations and travel and things of that nature. So taking some time out to watch this, if you're watching it live with us right now or if you're reviewing it later, thank you so much for doing that. If we can ever be of assistance anytime, uh, please contact us. Again, this software is made by pastors, made by lay people, made by uh, technical people. It's made for you and it's made for the church, and we want to be able to be there to be of assistance and help you out on things. So, Rob, I'm going to switch it back over to you from, Wonderful. A, from a slide. Whoop. Hold on here. I'm going to share. I'm going to change presenter back to you so that you can now take it over and show how people can sign up. There we are. Demo. Great. So, I have the link up where you can start your free trial. That's our core marketing page, uh, just when you get to that page, scroll down and then it's super easy to get started with the free trial. Um, and then if you have any further questions, our software consultants, Dave Farnham and Stephen Jenkins would love to be able to talk to you and just answer any questions, concerns you have uh, of how do you best utilize this software and whether or not it's really going to save you all the time that Ken's been talking about today. Uh, we also have an incredible support team. Uh, once you've gotten the software or during your trial, if you have any questions about the nitty gritty pieces of if, if you're confused with something or uh, if 
there's any questions you have with the software, our teams here are just, everything we do is to make your ministry as efficient and as easy as possible when it comes to these administrative tasks. Um, Ken? Yeah. Well, now is time for the question time uh, for the segment. Anyone who's listening uh, in on the webinar today, feel free to submit any questions you have to uh, the question feature in the webinar, and uh, we will kind of serve these up and see if... Uh, well, you know. as we're waiting for any questions, if, if yeah. there are any questions, uh, my recommendation is get sign up for that demo and just start using it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to break the software. You're not going to, you know, nothing's going to go bad and go and go wrong. Uh, just start using it and and start adding into your hymns and and checking out different uses of the divine services of your creative worship, things like that. I think and I'm hoping that we were able to show that it is just so easy to use and very intuitive. If you've set up a worship service before, or let's say you've just been tasked with, boy, now I've got a new responsibility. I'm supposed to help pastor develop the bulletin every week. If you've had to do that manually and typing that into Word, think of how much easier it would be yeah. uh, to be able to do it online, save it as a Word document, go in and make tweaks, go in and make edits, add maybe members' names and things of that nature into the prayers, uh, and have that just right at your fingertips. So I, I would say try the demo out and see if you have questions. Oh, and it looks like we don't have any questions right now, Ken. Okay. Well, uh, this is also one of those things. As you finish watching this and as you're going through your day, if something pops up and you have a question, feel free to get a hold of us. We want to be able to address those. Uh, Dave and Stephen would love to chat with you and help consult and see if this is something that makes sense uh, for you to bring into your church as well. All right. Well, Thank you, everyone, again, for joining us today. Blessings on your ministry. Thank you.